A rare visitor from beyond our solar system has just swept past the Earth. It is called Comet 3I Atlas. 3I. Atlas just flew past Earth, and it didn't even notice us. December 19th was supposed to be the big moment, but the object was on the complete opposite side of the Sun, 168 million miles away. We thought we were the target, but we weren't. So, if it didn't come here for Earth, then what did it come here for? The day we got ignored. Let's start with what happened on December 19th, because this is where the whole story begins to fall apart. For months, everyone had been hyping up this date as the moment when 3i Atlas would make its closest approach to Earth. The media was calling it the Great Interstellar Flyby. Scientists were preparing their telescopes, Amateur astronomers were planning viewing parties, and all of the alien probe enthusiasts were convinced that this was going to be the day when 3i Atlas would finally reveal its true purpose. And technically, December 19th was the day when the distance between our planet and this interstellar visitor reached its minimum. But here's the thing, the minimum distance was 168 million miles. That's further away than the Sun. And not only was it far away, but 3i Atlas was actually on the complete opposite side of the solar system from us. So, while everyone on Earth was pointing their telescopes up at the sky, hoping to catch a glimpse of this mysterious object, it was hidden behind the bright light of the Sun. We couldn't see it, and more importantly, it couldn't see us. And that doesn't sound like the behavior of an alien probe that traveled billions of miles across interstellar space just to check out planet Earth. Because if you're going to make a journey like that, you don't show up on the wrong side of the sun. You don't hide behind the brightest object in the solar system. You make an appearance. You get close enough to actually observe the planet you came to visit. But 3i Atlas didn't do any of that. It sailed right past us at a distance where Earth would have barely registered as anything more than a tiny blue dot in the darkness. And for an object that supposedly came here to study our planet, that's a pretty disappointing performance. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe it was just bad timing. Maybe 3i Atlas wanted to visit Earth, but the orbital mechanics just didn't line up properly. Except that's not how this works. Because 3i Atlas isn't stuck in an orbit around the Sun like the planets are. It's traveling on a hyperbolic trajectory, which means it's moving way too fast for the Sun's gravity to capture it. This object is a one-time visitor. It came in from interstellar space and it's going to leave just as quickly. And because it's not bound by the Sun's gravity, it has complete freedom of movement through the solar system. It goes where it wants to go and it went to the opposite side of the Sun from Earth. That was a choice. Or, at the very least, it was the natural result of whatever course this object was already on when it entered the solar system. And that tells us something really important. Earth was not the destination. We were never the main event. Where it's actually going. But if Earth wasn't the target, then what was? Well, let's look at where 3i Atlas is actually going. Because we know exactly where this thing is headed, and we know exactly when it's going to get there. On March the 16th, 2026, just 82 days from now, 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to the planet Jupiter. And the distance at that encounter will be 53 million miles. Now, you might be thinking, okay, 53 million miles is still pretty far away. And you're right, it is far, but it's also three times closer than 3i Atlas ever got to Earth. So if we're comparing the two encounters, Jupiter is clearly getting the better view. And that's kind of interesting because it suggests that maybe Jupiter was the real destination all along. And this isn't just speculation, the numbers back this up. When 3i Atlas flew past Earth on December 19th, the distance was 1.13 astronomical units. That's the measurement we use in space. 1 AU is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So 3i Atlas was more than one full astronomical unit away from us. But when it approaches Jupiter in March, the distance will be just 0.36 astronomical units. 
that's a third of the distance. And in space terms, that's the difference between barely noticing something and getting a really good look at it. So Jupiter is absolutely getting preferential treatment here. And when you start to think about why that might be, things get even more interesting. The perfect trajectory. Now, here's where it starts to get even more interesting. Let's talk about the trajectory. When 3i Atlas first entered our solar system back in the summer, one of the things that stood out to astronomers was how perfectly aligned this object was with the plane of the ecliptic. That's the flat disk where all of the planets orbit around the Sun. Most things in the solar system stay pretty close to that plane because that's where all the material was when the solar system first formed. It's where all the action is. But 3i Atlas came from interstellar space. It could have approached from any direction. Space is three-dimensional. This object could have come in from above or below or at some weird diagonal angle. The galaxy is full of stars in every direction. But instead, 3i Atlas came in almost perfectly flat with the ecliptic plane, only about three degrees off. And that's a pretty big coincidence. Because if you're trying to visit the planets in our solar system, then traveling along the ecliptic plane is exactly what you would do. It's the most efficient path. It's where all the planets are located. And it's the route that gets you the closest to the most interesting targets. It's like if you were driving across the country and you wanted to see as many major cities as possible, you wouldn't take some random route through the mountains and the deserts. You'd follow the interstate highways where all the population centers are located. That's what the ecliptic plane is. It's the highway of the solar system. And 3i Atlas chose to take it. But it gets weirder because we can actually trace the path of 3i Atlas through the solar system and see which planets it's been getting close to along the way. And when you do that, a pattern starts to emerge. Back on October the 3rd, 3i Atlas flew within 28 million miles of Mars. That's 0.19 astronomical units. Pretty close. Close enough to get some good observations of the red planet. Then it continued on toward the Sun and made its perihelion, its closest approach to the star, on October 29th. After that, it started heading back out into the solar system on its way out of town. And on December the 19th, it was technically at its closest distance to Earth. But again, that was 168 million miles away on the opposite side of the Sun. So Earth barely registered. We got skipped. And now 3i Atlas is headed straight for Jupiter. It's going to fly within 53 million miles of the gas giant which is closer than it got to any other planet in the solar system. And then after Jupiter, it's going to leave the solar system completely and head back out into interstellar space. So if you map out the entire journey, Mars got a decent flyby, Earth got ignored, and Jupiter gets the closest encounter. That's the actual story. And it raises an obvious question. Why Jupiter? Why Jupiter makes sense? And this brings up an important question. If 3i Atlas really is some kind of alien probe that was sent here to explore our solar system, then why would it skip Earth and go straight for Jupiter? Well, let's think about this from the perspective of an advanced alien civilization. You've got the technology to send a probe across interstellar space. You've got billions of years to make the journey and you finally arrive at a new star system. Where do you go first? Do you visit the small rocky planet with some water and some primitive life forms? Or do you visit the absolutely massive gas giant that dominates the entire solar system? Because here's the thing, Jupiter isn't just big, it's obscenely big. Jupiter has more mass than every other planet in the solar system combined. All of them, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, all the dwarf planets, all the asteroids, all the comets, everything. If you add up the mass of every single object in the solar system except the Sun, Jupiter is still heavier than half of that total. It's so big that if you hollowed it out, you could fit over 1,300 Earths inside. And its gravity is so strong that it's basically the second most important gravitational force in the solar system after the Sun. Everything orbits around the actual Sun,
but Jupiter's gravity influences the orbits of every other planet. It pulls on asteroids. It captures comets. It protects the inner solar system from impacts by acting like a giant cosmic vacuum cleaner. It's a heavyweight. And if you're an alien probe looking for the most interesting thing in the solar system, Jupiter is probably going to catch your attention a lot faster than Earth. And when you compare Earth to Jupiter in terms of pure mass, it's not even close. Jupiter is 318 times more massive than Earth. That's not 318%, that's 318 times. So if you're trying to study gravity, planetary formation, atmospheric dynamics, or magnetic fields, Jupiter is the ultimate laboratory. It's doing things on a scale that Earth could never match. And from a scientific perspective, that makes Jupiter way more valuable than Earth could ever be. The moons that matter. Now, let's talk about what makes Jupiter so interesting beyond just its size. Because it's not just a big ball of gas floating in space. Jupiter has 95 confirmed moons. That's 95 different worlds all orbiting around this one planet. And some of those moons are more interesting than Earth. Take Europa, for example. It's one of Jupiter's four largest moons, and scientists believe that beneath its frozen surface is a global ocean of liquid water. And this isn't just a theory. We have strong evidence from spacecraft observations that Europa's ocean is real, and that it contains more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. The entire ocean of Earth Every drop of water in every sea, lake, and river wouldn't even come close to filling up Europa's subsurface ocean. So if you're an alien probe looking for life, Europa is a pretty compelling target. It's got water, it's got energy from Jupiter's tidal forces heating the interior, and it's got all the ingredients necessary for life to exist. Earth has life on its surface, but Europa might have an entire ocean full of alien organisms living beneath the ice. We don't know, but the potential is there. And then there's Ganymede, the largest moon in the entire solar system. It's bigger than the planet Mercury. It's bigger than Pluto. And like Europa, Ganymede also has a subsurface ocean. So that's two moons with more water than Earth just orbiting around Jupiter. And we haven't even talked about Io yet. Io is the most volcanically active body in the entire solar system. It's got hundreds of active volcanoes constantly erupting and reshaping the surface. The entire moon is basically a volcanic hell world. It's a world of fire and sulfur and extreme geology. And if you're trying to study the diversity of planetary environments, Io is unlike anything else we know. So when you add it all up, Jupiter and its moons offer more variety more extremes, and more potential for discovery than Earth ever could. We're just one planet. Jupiter is an entire miniature solar system, with oceans and volcanoes and magnetic fields and radiation belts and atmospheric storms that have been raging for centuries. It's the ultimate destination for exploration. We'll get to watch. But here's what really makes this whole situation fascinating. We're not the only ones who think Jupiter is interesting. NASA thinks so too, because right now, at this very moment, there's already a spacecraft in orbit around Jupiter. It's called Juno. It's been studying the gas giant since 2016. And when 3i Atlas makes its closest approach to Jupiter on March 16th, Juno is going to be there to witness the encounter. Now, Juno wasn't designed to study interstellar comets. It was built to investigate Jupiter's atmosphere, its magnetic field, and its internal structure. But NASA has the ability to reorient the spacecraft and point its cameras toward 3i Atlas as it flies past. So we're going to get photographs of this interstellar visitor from a completely different perspective than anything we've been able to capture from Earth. And depending on how close Juno can get and how good the lighting conditions are, we might finally get a clear look at what 3i Atlas actually is. We might be able to see the surface of the object. We might be able to distinguish between the core and the coma of gas and dust surrounding it. And we might be able to settle once and for all whether this thing is just a weird comet or something else entirely. 
And this is important because 3i Atlas has been behaving in some very unusual ways. We've talked about this in previous videos, but just to recap, this object has done things that no normal comet would do. It started glowing incredibly bright way too far from the sun. It developed an anti-tail that pointed toward the sun instead of away from it. It released massive amounts of carbon dioxide instead of water vapor. It had nickel in its coma without any iron, which doesn't make sense because those two metals are always found together in nature. And then when it passed close to the sun during perihelion, it accelerated in a way that suggests some kind of propulsion system. It changed direction by over 200 kilometers per day, which is way more than any normal comet should be capable of. Now, all of those things can be explained by natural processes if you really stretch the definitions of what's normal for a comet. But when you add them all up, it starts to look like 3 I Atlas is either the weirdest comet we've ever discovered, or it's something that's pretending to be a comet. And if it's the latter, then the fact that it's headed straight for Jupiter instead of Earth suddenly makes a lot more sense. Because let's be honest, if you're an advanced alien civilization and you're going to send a probe to explore another star system, you're probably not going to waste your time studying the inhabitants of one random planet. You're going to study the entire system. You're going to map out the star, investigate the gas giants, check out the interesting moons, and collect as much data as possible before heading back into interstellar space. And that's exactly what 3i Atlas has been doing. It came into the solar system at the perfect angle to visit multiple planets. It flew past Mars to check out the red planet. It ignored Earth because we're not that interesting. And now it's headed for Jupiter because that's where the real discoveries are waiting. It's a grand tour of the solar system. And we were never the main attraction. We were just a stop along the way. And not even an important stop. We got bypassed completely. Now, does this mean that 3i Atlas is definitely an alien probe? No, it could still be a completely natural object. A comet from another star system that just happens to have a weird composition and a trajectory that coincidentally lines up with the most interesting targets in our solar system. That's possible. Unlikely, but possible. But what we can say for certain is that the idea of 3i Atlas being an alien probe makes a lot more sense when you stop assuming Earth was the target and start looking at where this object is actually going. Because Jupiter is the real prize. Jupiter is what you would visit if you wanted to understand our solar system. And on March the 16th, 2026, we're going to watch as this interstellar visitor makes its closest approach to the King of Planets. And maybe, just maybe, we'll finally get some answers about what this thing really is. So what do you think? Is 3i Atlas just a weird comet that happened to aim for Jupiter by coincidence? Or is there something more intentional going on here? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to follow along as this story continues to develop, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.